After 16 hours of intense negotiations in Minsk, Belarus, the leaders of Russia and Ukraine, along with their German and French counterparts, renewed a fragile truce on Wednesday to bring an end to the conflict that has killed more than 5,300 people during the past 10 months in eastern Ukraine. However, U.S. State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki noted that proof will be in the actions of all the parties involved, including Russia and Russian-backed separatists. The parties have a long road ahead before achieving peace and the full restoration of Ukraine's sovereignty. And so while the first test and the first step here is the ceasefire, which according to the agreement will uh, be put in place this weekend, there's a great deal of work to be done. Uh, As you know, and has been reported, there are reports of, which we're still reviewing the agreement, but there are reports of um, discussions that will be ongoing about uh, about, um, addressing the border questions over the course of the coming months. One major point of contention left unaddressed is Debaltsevich, the crucial roadway and rail junction town about 50 miles north of Donetsk. Battles there have been particularly fierce in recent weeks, as the town has grown both strategically and symbolically important to both sides. And with the ceasefire not going into effect until Sunday, that leaves two full days of fighting left to be had. In Minsk, Russian President Vladimir Putin urged the thousands of Ukrainian forces holed up in the town to lay down their arms and retreat peacefully. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko has indicated that that won't happen. Whatever is decided with the vaults of it will be significant and possibly a game changer. Another glaring omission is the Black Sea Peninsula of Crimea. Nowhere in the document is it discussed what is to become of the Ukrainian territory annexed by Russia after a stealth military invasion last March.